Hi, so I wanted to make a quick video, actually not a, well, let me just start from the beginning. So the year is 2024 and the world right now is just at a point, at a point where things can either go really bad, really fast or things can slowly start getting really good. And so I wanted to make this video as an instruction for anybody who is watching in the future, in the year 2042 or the year 2055. Um, this video is going to stay on YouTube forever um, or as long as my channel exists and I wanted to just give anybody who watches this instructions on how to conserve our earth that you know we have today again the year is 2024 and so who am I? A little bit of background for people who are just coming across this channel. Um, I'm just a regular dude living in a regular town. Um, but I did go to university and I had the privilege of studying a lot of cool concepts while I was in university. I studied wildlife and fish conservation biology at the University of California Davis. So I learned a lot of of what we call um, ecology and restor restorative conservation um, and what it means to restore our natural ecosystems in a way that they can they can ref kind of resemble what those natural environments looked like in the past. Of course, there isn't a perfect way to restore an ecosystem to what it actually was, but we can still try. And from there on, I will get into the subject of this video. So instructions, instructions on how to conserve our world for the people of 2050, 2055, 2042 who may be watching this sometime in the future so what can you do as a regular citizen of a nation who has made decisions that don't necessarily benefit the environment and well-being of our earth so what can you do you you probably say well, or maybe you may be thinking, well, I am just an ordinary, an ordinary person with um, only the resources that I have in my reach. Well, to you, I would say there are still things you can do, no matter how small they are. And for me, this answer or this instruction would be start collecting seeds. Okay, start collecting seeds of the vegetables that you buy, of the fruits that you buy. Even if like you don't eat a lot of like natural foods. And this doesn't have to be foods that are organic uh, or labeled organic. It doesn't have to be expensive is what I'm trying to say, okay? For example, the other day I was eating a chili pepper, a jalapeno, and I, I took the seeds and I put them on a wet uh, paper towel and a regular plastic Ziploc bag. And I just put them in a dark, cool place and I, I let them uh, germinate. So this is something simple that you can do. 
And I actually done this before with an avocado. Um, I did the same process. I actually, avocados took a little bit longer to germinate. I left them there for like about three or four months. Then after three or four months, I looked at the bag, untangled the roots from the paper towel, planted it in soil, and now I have an avocado tree. So what does this all mean? What does all of this mean? This goes down to an idea called food sovereignty. The idea that you can grow your own food wherever you may be. And you may be thinking, well, that sounds like a great plan, this and that. But you may be thinking, I live in a very small one bedroom apartment. I can't afford to grow my own food because I don't have the space. Well, there are solutions to that as well. You can just start by making your own compost. And then you don't need to have a big area of land to make your own compost. For example, I just started, you know, collecting my food scraps from natural foods and fruits. Garlic, onion, cilantro, peppers, any sort of food scrap. I kind of collected it and I put it in a bag any sort of um, green waste. I collected it and I put it in the bag. And you know, I sprinkled it with some soil that I had from old um, soil bags that I bought at my local um, uh, gardening store. And so, you know, slowly, little by little, I kept adding more food scraps in the bag and then I created compost. And I live in a one bedroom apartment. I don't have acres of land. So this is something you can do if you want to. You know, you just kind of have to make sure to sometimes open the bag, let some air in, shake it a little bit, put it back. That's it. Just don't put any meats in there. Just organic plant matter. It's all it takes. And you know, start buying little pots where you can, you know, put the seeds that you germinated into those little pots and start growing your own trees. And why is this important? We have to recognize that communities have been doing this for time immemorial. Native communities have been doing this in time immemorial. Indigenous communities have been doing this for hundreds, thousands of years. But then systems like capitalism and unfortunate imbalances of power in our society today have pushed these communities away and kind of tucked them away um, so that they lose their traditional ways and therefore taking away power from these communities. And to that I say no more. To that I say, stand up for what is right. Water is life. Water is a resource that we as Americans take for granted. We, we take it for granted. We use it in our swimming pools, we use it in our sprinkler hydrating systems. And we don't realize that water is a deity. It's, it's, it's an entity within itself. Water is life. We need to stop using it as a common commodity that comes and goes because no, water isn't going to be here if we keep mis misusing it the way that we have for all these years. So these are some ideas for, for people living in the future for the year 2050 and beyond. You know, people, when I publish this video, the people of 2024 will have access to this information. And of course, like I said, this isn't a new idea. This is just going back 
to the way that Native communities have built relationships with the land that they've lived on and continue to live on for thousands of years. And so I encourage you to become stewards of your land as well and give back to Mother Nature because we've just been taking and taking and taking so much from her since the start of the colonial period. And I think we can make the tides turn. Start growing your own food. Save your seeds. Please save your seeds. Avocado seeds, mango seeds, jalapeno seeds. You can start growing onions. You can start growing lettuce. You can start growing tomatoes of all sorts. Save the seeds because in saving seeds, you're investing in the Earth's future. You're investing in a future in, we can, in which we can still have biodiversity. And that's a message of hope that I hope people pick up on. It is not impossible. It is not impossible. You don't need to be rich. You don't need to be rich to do these things. Get connected. Back with Mother Earth. And I hope for the people who watch this video in 2055, 2042, 2050 can find some value from this message. All right. That's all. Thank you for watching.